Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Q&A with our lovely, lovely guest, Justin Cook. Hi, everybody. It's so great to see you. I am your moderator. I am Aya. It is nice to meet you all. Hello. All right, you ready? Sure. All right, so. Are you going to ask me the 10 questions like it's uh, inside the actor's studio? Yep, That'll we're going fun. We're going down the whole path. <laughs> I had to make some fun questions for you, though. Um, okay, so first, how are you enjoying Momocon? I think this is great. You people are awesome. You have supplied an incredible weekend. I go places, and I get asked all the time, hey, what'd you think of Atlanta? And I have to explain that I never get to see much of Atlanta, but I see the best part which is what you guys bring to the table every time you come by and say hello. And I gotta tell you, Atlanta is a pretty awesome place. So thank you guys. Well. They got a good Sunday. record store too. Uh, it, you're you gonna go to Criminal Records. It's yes. What'd you get? You wanna go with my records? Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so much fun. I'm sorry, Justin Cook's like, Justin Cook likes records. I love records. All right, let's see. We got some good ones today, guys. Oh wait, here's my picture. You might like that. This. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Anybody like Otis Redding? Yeah. yeah. I do too. <laughs> Look at that. Right there on the original Volt label. Do you know where that is? You who? Nice. That's my girl right over there. She's these. You guys, you're from Memphis, aren't you? Right? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Memphis. This is where Stax Records is, right? So there we go. And I think we got, oh, this is a good one too, but it's backwards. This is the back of an Ike and Tina Turner album. Ooh! Big fan. Who do we have here? James yeah. Brown? Hi! That's where I got my whole voice from, right here. <laughs> Godfather of Soul. See, right. now I'm not going to be able to hear Yusuke any differently now. Now I'll hear James Brown. Anybody ever heard of Dr. John? Yeah. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, here, watch this. Let's see. Anybody heard of Electric Mayhem? Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem? Based off of Dr. John, huh? All right, who we got here? This is backwards. Oh, and there's that. More. Otis Redding. The love man. The funny story about Otis Redding, when he first came into Stax to record, he was actually uh, not, like, he came in as, like, the driver for a different artist altogether. And he kept bugging everybody at the studio if he could uh, cut his own track, right? So he then goes in, finally at the end of the day, everybody, musicians and all the studio folks, they're like ready to get out of there. They're ready to go home and have dinner. Oh, but they forgot this tall guy wants to come in and cut a track. He gets behind the microphone and starts singing. And Steve the Colonel Cropper, who was the on-hand guitar player at Stax, says the hair on his arms grew about six inches just because of the soul and the drama that came out of this man's voice. From there on out, right, he became Otis Redding. All right, and then this, Howlin' Wolf. Blues, anybody like blues? Yes! And then Combat Rock by The Clash, which I thought was really fun. That's all I got. Oh that's my that's gosh, that's amazing. It was a good time. I made a big mess down here. Oh, man. My pile of junk. This just became my favorite panel oh, ever. <laughs> we just rap about records. We're still, I'm, we're like we're done. We're going to keep rapping about this real quick. Quick question. Um, okay, so we're going to play with two. Yusuke, Kirishima. Yeah. What kind of records would they listen to? Well, we've joked, as someone may be here, we've joked about Kirishima. I think Kirishima may have a Dave Matthews fetish, I think. I think he digs that kind of like... Laid back beach tones. I think is. I think that like if if uh, by himself he'd listen to like Dave Matthews and Tim Reynolds and like just the acoustic stuff. But with other people, he'll try to put something on that's a little more of the hits, right? So that's that. Use K. I don't think Use K and I listen to the same music. <laughs> I think Use K listens to music a lot harder edged than 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 I do. Love but I, but I don't, we may share some styles in our uh, hip hop enjoyment. Ooh, so, like, like. I don't know, I guess with, I, you jewels. know what, I really do feel like Yusuke loves N.W.A. <laughs> yes. I do, and anything associated with that entire scene. What? Oh my god, that's, 
We're right. going in a different direction. We're just going <laughs> to talk about music and anime <laughs> all day. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so not only are you a voice actor, but you're also a producer, which yeah. I learned, and a director. I was. Yeah. Was? Yeah, So was. give well, us a little And whenever insight. I'm called to the challenge again. Ooh, sure. okay. So what's, what's the difference between producing and directing in, in anime? Well, right. So when they, when they say producer, what they're saying is that I'm... I, Look, I started at Funimation in, in 22 years ago, February of 2000. Anybody remember that Leonardo DiCaprio movie, The Beach? I started that weekend. <laughs> and uh, I started as an ADR engineer. So I was the guy that was pushing the buttons to record the actors. I was working on Dragon Ball Z alongside Chris Sabat. And uh, Chris and I eventually got to be really tight and really close. and. When he stepped out of Funimation uh, to go uh, start his own recording studio, uh, I got promoted kind of to that lead voice director role. And that was somewhere around the time that Yu Yu Hakusho had started coming through Fruits Basket. Excuse me, hello. Fruits Basket. <laughs> That's enough gas to get us to Pittsburgh if we need. Uh, <laughs> so at any rate, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, Fruits Basket, um, Kitty Grade. And then right somewhere and it's, it's funny, if you ask Colleen, it's at the halfway mark, but if you ask me, it's at episode 18, is when she took over voice directing on Kitty Grade, uh, which was a show that, that I was working on. And uh, when that happened, they put me, uh, basically I was in charge of trying to bring new directors in. And uh, that's where I was called a line producer for a few years. And then um, the, the head of the department uh, moved, moved on, and I got then that individual's job. And so that's what put me in the producer's seat. And the producer's seat really, the job of a producer, well, <laughs> the job of a producer in Hollywood is get money, right? But in my job, it is ultimately to get talent, but the real thing is to kind of clear the road for creativity. That's what a producer's job is. It's to give room for a voice director and the actors and the engineers and the mix engineers to do what they need to do to make a great episode. So that's ultimately what I've kind of moved into. And, and mainly the reason why is that although, you know, voice acting is, is fun, it's, it's, it, it, it's ex exciting, <laughs> it's fun. Um, being a director is great fun for sure. Uh, but, but being a, here's my problem. I don't like to follow somebody else's rules. So if I'm going to be put in a position to either follow the rules or make the rules, I'm going to make the rules. So that's how I'm a producer. I love it. So you've done, like, you play a very prominent role in generational anime, I, I, I'm going to say, because there's an entire generation in here that's like, we're here for you, Skate, you're a meshy. And then there's a, do it, go, yeah, woo! And then there's an entire generation that's here for Kirishima. And both those generations have been affected by you in many ways, in beautiful ways. That's why we're all here, that's why we all like anime. And with those, those iconic characters that you have made and continue to make, um, what do you think about just the growth of, of the generations that come and go and grow in anime as you, as an actor, produce these shows and work on these shows? Well, uh, you're giving me more credit than I deserve. All of you are. I didn't make any of these characters at all, right? So I like to think of it as like all of us that are in any kind of dub business is we're ultimately, we're adding a, a twig to, uh, to a limb on a branch, on a trunk of a tree that has already been fully grown, fully developed. And our job is to match what it is that tree looks and feels like, right? So, uh, once they say, hey, Justin, you've been cast as Yusuke, here's the voice we're going for, and I lock that in, all my cues from that point forward, granted, come from the voice director, who was kind of easy for me to get along with with Yu Yu Hakusho. It was me. And, uh, <laughs> but the face of Yusuke and his body language and what he's doing, that's what I'm responding to. That's what I am channeling, I suppose, as I'm watching it on screen. Uh, like, we did a panel the other day with, with Claire, right? And, Cl and Claire does a lot of, which by the way, it, I, it, wait, no, hold on. <laughs> Everybody watch Dragon Ball Z in here? Or does anybody know what Dragon Ball Z is? Okay. Any, 
you know that like uh, Ian Corlett was the voice of Goku for like what the first like 26 episodes or something and so Claire that's Goku's kid no it's not I'm telling you it's proof that Goku can have a well-adjusted child <laughs> Anyway, anyway, I have distracted. So, uh, it's like a magic trick. Um, but at any rate, uh, so, yeah, so I'm just ultimately going off the cues, right? And so with Kirishima, I'm not the voice director on that one. That's Colleen. So it's even easier for me as an actor because ultimately I'm just watching Kirishima and what he's got going on with his body language and face. And the rest of it is letting Colleen guide where it is she knows that story is going, right? So, so it's like... <laughs> For me, it's like uh, it, tracing to a degree, right? You can trace on you know, onion paper on a, a, a drawing and you can do a bad job of that and you can do a really good job. And it, and it does take patience and time to do a good job even when you're tracing, right? So I throw everything I've got at it and hope that honesty and heart comes out of it. Beautiful. It might not have been an answer to the question, but it was a good <laughs> sound bite. It was, a, it, was, it was the best answer. It was an answer you gave. That makes it a good answer. Um, how did you protect your vocal cords? As Does it sound like I protected my I vocal mean, cords? That, I have to, you're still, you can still use them. So yeah. I, that's, that's protection to me. But it how sounds, did I, you protect, like, what did you, like? Nothing. Does, does anyone remember the screams that Yusuke had to go through? Epic, wait, someone brought me the VHS tape today. It's like, what, the, in the early 40s? Yeah, no so, problem. I can do that all day. So much pain. I, I, I remember them, and I watched them recently, and I was like, wow, you guys really getting beat up. Like, and I was the director, looking at it going, nah, let's do it again. Nah, let's do it again. Nah, run it again, run it again. No, nah, so we'll do the whole thing. you did that to yourself. Yeah, like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> so... With um, Yu Yu Hakusho, um, being a spirit detective, Yusuke Yurameshi was one, do you believe in spirits or ghosts? Uh, well, yeah, I do. I just never seen one. You, same boat. Yeah. Totally believe in them. Think For they sure. exist. Ain't seen one. I kind of don't want to <laughs> see one, though. I, I want to, like, get little notions of one. Do you? Yeah, like, I don't want to see it, but I'd like, like, a, something to fall. I'm moving. If something falls and I'm not there, I'm out. I'm out. You ever hear that joke? Uh, was Eddie Murphy talking? You remember? I didn't know none of you even know who Eddie Murphy is, but he dealt jokes one day. Yeah, he told a joke. It's like the the Poltergeist movie. That's nuts, man. As soon as someone's like, "Get out!" Oh, we gotta go. <laughs> I, I'm not hanging around. As as believers in ghosts, um, what do you think the your, I'm going to call them the Yurameshi crew or the Yu Hakusho crew, or I don't know. What do you think that crew would be like as Ghostbusters? Okay, let's see. <laughs> Vinkman is Yurameshi. I'm taking the Bill Murray role right out of the gate. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. This is, okay, so Ray Stance would have to be uh, Karama, the intelligent one. Yeah. I hate to put, e well, the heart, the heart of the Ghostbusters, as it were. Um, maybe I would make him Egon then. Yes, he's Egon because Ray Stance is obviously Kuwabara. That has to be. Okay, okay. And that makes Winston uh, Hie. That works. And who's, who's Slime? Who's Slimer? <gasps> Wait. Well, you're talking about the cartoon, the real Ghostbusters, with Slimer when he was part of the crew? Yeah, we'll, we'll include him. Slimer's poo. I knew it! <laughs> Who is Slimer? That sounds better than Slimer's poo. Yeah. <laughs> Accidental humor there. <laughs> I love it. Um, with, uh, let's see, let's see. We got, we got a lot of things here. Oh, so I don't know if you remember it, but you helped produce a show called, uh, anime, show uh, called um, ID Invade. Yeah, I'm in it too. Who are you? I'm like, what's that guy's name? With a fu Fugida? Fugida, with a hole in the head. <gasps> you are him! I know. That's what I just said. <laughs> I've done a lot of research, and all of these names have, names have blended in with each other. So the process of working on that versus working on, like, my hero. Yeah. Like, what are the different pieces you have to put together for that all to work? Obviously, like, we've got voice actors that are different, and, but it's a completely different story. 
For sure. And it's a completely different genre. So yeah. that's one of the things that I, I'm, I'm learning and I've enjoyed is I, I want to ask, as anime has grown in the different genres that we get to see, we were usually seeing shonen or um, shoujo. Thank you, love. Shoujo. Um, now we're seeing detectives. Now we're seeing, and not just like Conan, but we're seeing, uh, <laughs> we're seeing like so many different genres come out. Things are becoming, we're learning about politics in a different light that's not just being used, like we're not being tricked by fighting robots, Gundam, love you. But we're seeing all these different genres come out um, as anime grows and as anime gets better and stories develop. Um, what is your opinion on that? What do you think about that? How is that working in the things that you might want to voice act in or help direct? Uh, well, there, I, there's probably less intention from my point of view, right? But I mean, I do observe. However, on the other side of the coin, you know, only in the last like four, maybe five years have companies in the U.S. really uh, brought more and more and more anime over to the United States. Because the truth is, they've got four seasons every year of anime that's coming out in Japan, and it has always been that way. There have always been 40 or 50 new shows starting up. It's only 10 or 12 of them have come over to the United States. But now companies are bringing over almost everything out of the season, and we're getting to dub almost everything out of the season. And uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, that can be a double-edged sword, right? Because we used to get a lot more time to work on episodes. Uh, you had to wait a lot longer to hear an English dub for an episode. Uh, now you wait about two weeks, right? Which is probably about as fast as it's ever going to get, uh, unless it is that our partners in Japan send materials two weeks earlier than they broadcast, and then we can go out on day and day. Uh, so I don't know. There's a part of me that wonders, has it always been this diverse and always been this wonderful, right? Uh, we just haven't gotten to see it all? Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. But ID Invaded is a great show. I love it. And um, the voice director for that, my Dragon Ball Z fans out there, uh, do you remember Android 16? That was the voice director for ID Invaded, which so I'm super happy to get to work with him, and I got to work with. I think that might have been the first time he directed me on something. Uh, for you, you Hawkeye Show fans, that's Goki. Remember the guy in the first like seven episodes, the eating kids' souls. <laughs> Man, what a way to say we're talking about a darker anime, huh? <laughs> but uh, so yeah, getting to work with him, and he had a full vision of what he heard for the show and what he felt like these voices sounded like. Um, I didn't feel like I was really adding a lot of creative input to that character because Jeremy had such a solid notion of what he wanted for it. Um, matter of fact, he had heard a voice I had done previously and was kind of building off of that one. And so that's why I think, if I'm not mistaken, I don't even remember his voice, but it was definitely something, it was way chill. It was the kind of like, Chuck Huber would call it voice acting Disneyland, you know? <laughs> um, so you mentioned DBZ, uh, Reddit. Yes. Yes. Okay. What so do you want? If I spend if, all my time in hell now, I'm okay. now the wimpiest one here. This is gonna be great. Okay. So, if Raditz came to Earth and Did. simply to reconnect with his brother, and 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 just be a big brother again, how would that interaction go? Do you think Raditz was ever a big brother? I kind of but think, if he was, I, I saw I, I saw uh, somebody come through my autograph line today, and they had uh, Emily had signed uh, sign. I don't remember what it was, but what it was is she said something about Goku, and when the fan brought it to me. I was like, "What? That doesn't even say anything about me," you know. <laughs> I don't know. I think that Raditz, if we're gonna dive into the wormhole here, and this is based off of the Broly movie, in my opinion, it would seem to me that Raditz has always been more interested in trying to impress Vegeta uh, than ever even being interested in Goku uh, or Kakarot. Um, matter of fact, it did, it did, it did it not seem to anyone else that, it, like young Raditz, it was almost as if that was a second thought. Like, that, again, that's Raditz trying to impress Vegeta to say, I think I might have a plan, right? When they're saying, well, I guess, it also, young Raditz sounds a lot like Popeye to me. Just, <laughs> anyway, so, <clears throat> so at any rate, uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't, I don't, I mean, we're going into real fan fiction to say that he's a good older brother. Yeah, let's, let's try. 
I'm not really good with that. It's just not his character. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I don't think he would I don't I don't I don't know. I don't even Raditz, know how to play full time bad brother. I don't even know how to play a positive of Raditz. <laughs> what? Say what? <laughs> oh wait. You like I'm sorry. I don't know what you're saying. I can't I don't it's funny, these rooms are built in such a way that you can hear me just fine, but you guys all sound backwards to me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm easily distracted. Hmm, let me think. Uh, what exactly? What's some things that have been making you happy that you've been enjoying for the year? For this year? Yeah, or last year. Uh, wow. Uh, you, uh, there, I've, I've learned... This is just my philosophy. We're gonna do philosophy with Justin Cook. I've learned that other things don't make me happy. I make me happy, right? So you, you live with your own happiness, and then you can accent with things, right? Because otherwise, if you don't do that, then these things become, they like own you more than they, right? Because they determine your happiness. So I don't have things that make me happy. I mean, I walk outside, and it's a rainy day. I can go, oh, wow, you know, it's kind of beautiful, even though it's a rainy day. If it's a sunny day, I'd be like, ah, oh, it's kind of beautiful. It's a sunny day so i think that the catch is is whatever it is those things are people their attitudes whatever uh a great anger management thing like when you're driving here's a good hint for you if you find yourself getting mad at other drivers and things like this imagine that whatever driver it is that's making you mad uh just got a phone call that someone super close to them died do you forgive them now like that <laughs> who said no you're going to have to come up with a scenario you would forgive, though. Because you would forgive something. I love that you said no, by the way. Thank you for that. <laughs> but that's, that helps. That's like, that's what kind of, so that's the lensing of the way I look through the world, right? So, yeah, so things, yeah, things don't make me happy. My wife makes me happy, I suppose. I'm pretty dependent on her. My kid, he's pretty happy. Although he's 19, so he's not really happy. <laughs> so, yeah. What's that? Yeah, right? I, yeah, I try not to rub that in just yet. <laughs> let him ease in. It sucks. Yeah, let it ease in. Um, you ready to start lining up? We'll do one more question, and then we'll start our lovely Q&As for you guys. Oh, but yeah. you can line up now. Yeah, you can line up now. <laughs> Safely. I like that he is first. The most excited I have ever seen Hie. <laughs> um, so my last question is, what was the first show you got to, you started that transition from, uh, um, I forget the title. I'm just going to say, what was the first show you got to direct? Dragon Ball. The Dragon Ball. Yeah. Oh. So like episode four. 14 through episode 82, like the end of the Red Ribbon Army saga. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, you go back and watch it, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, it was his first. <laughs> he said he was trying to make a limb that looked just like the tree. He didn't do that. They're not all home runs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you ready? Come on up. Thank you. All right. I just have one question. I will try to have just one answer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you know about the Yu Yu Hakusho OVA that came out in like 2018. I was just wondering if and or when you guys are going to be dubbing that. Let's stick with if, and the answer is yes. <laughs> uh, we actually announced that Sabbath and I were on a panel in New York Comic Con in 2019, maybe right before the world ended. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we talked about uh, being, we, we actually had made the announcement of doing that, and, uh, and so there you go. So hold on to your horses, man, it's coming. You're getting your backstory, okay? Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what's your question? I'm sorry. Uh, it's pretty much going to be asking him, like, what his favorite part of the whole series was to record. Hey, Justin, how you doing, man? And I'm awesome. How That's are you? That's good to hear, man. I'm great. I'm actually really happy to meet you. Yeah, me too, man. What's your name? Zach. It's a pleasure. Zach, dude. Thank you, brother. I'm Justin. It's great to meet you. Yeah, man. Uh, my question for you is, in the whole series of you, Hakusho, 
at what point in the series was just your absolute favorite to dub over? Like throughout the entire four seasons, what was your favorite? Yeah, yeah, I don't look at the world that way. <laughs> <laughs> so when they assigned you Yohaka Show to me, uh, I immediately watched the entire series. I'm not kidding, like it was Friday midday and I finished it somewhere around Sunday at 3 a.m. Um, went straight through. It was on the old fan, uh, fan dubs that yep. switched Hie and Karama's name all the time. Yep, I remember that. Yeah. So those were the first ones I watched. Had I not done that, I wouldn't have known that Blue Ogre was the narrator of the thing, right? Uh, so I had a pretty, I, so when I'm watching the thing, I'm immediately figuring out what do I hear. I'm making notes about the character voices that I'm hearing. I was making notes about Sensui's seven personalities before we started dubbing episode three. All right? Right. So it was, uh, so there wasn't one section, right? What, I was looking at a painting. And I wasn't looking at the painting saying, I like this part. I wanted to make sure that when you step back and look at the painting, it would be as beautiful as what it was supposed Just to be. Just one whole. Yeah. So that was, that was the whole thing. Yeah. Epi my favorite episode was one through 112. Awesome, man. Plus Aizu Hakusho, the OVA, and now another OVA. No, another OVA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Absolutely, Zach. Your mask is freaking me out. <laughs> but everything else is great. Who is your favorite character that you voice? So I, I steal an answer from a comedian that I like named Jerry Seinfeld on this one. He was asked one time what his favorite episode of that show was. And his answer said, his answer was this. He said, uh, it's a lot like asking somebody what's your favorite breath, right? The one that gets you to the next one. <laughs> it turns out that each one of these characters has a little bit of me in it. And I've stolen a little bit of them and I keep them in my heart, right? But they all live in here. So you imagine if you live in a world brain that uh, you say, I like Yusuke the best, and now you've hurt Kirishima's feelings, and he's in a corner crying. I've got Boo screaming, and he's angry. Raditz continues to feel unappreciated. <laughs> Fugit is trying to drill a hole out, you know? So I, I don't mess with any of that stuff. Stay solid as a rock, huh? Hey friend, how are you? Same to you. When you were friends with um, Deku and Bakugo, did you expect that? In the, sh in the series? Yes. You know what, I kinda did. Uh, as soon as I started hearing Kirishima's lines, I started thinking, wow, this guy's gonna be everybody's best friend in this entire <laughs> class. And then they introduced class 1B and I saw Tatsu Tatsu, I was like, he's gonna be everybody's so it didn't surprise me at all. Um, Kirishima seems like the kind of guy who what he wants to do is help foster the successes for other people, right? So he just wants to make everybody else be better, which is kind of an awesome way to be, right? So I figured I'd try to pick that up from him and learn to be that way. But believe this, I'm actually now, because of that show, pretty good friends with both Justin Briner and Clifford Chapin, which are the voice actors for Bakugo and, uh, and Deku. So no, I wasn't surprised, but I'm certainly proud to be their friends. Hi, sir, you're a freaking angel, by the way. No, I'm not. No so, wings here. <laughs> so my question for you is, what do you hope, since you're like so optimistic and I love it, so what do you hope Kirishima's future looks like? Red Riot, just Kirishima in general? Well, let's jump way ahead. Let's get into absolute like adult fan fiction. And I don't mean that in a dirty way. I mean like past, <laughs> past the high school, right? Cause that's all gonna be the storyline, then the manga and all that kind of thing. So like, I don't know. I have thought about like, what would, uh, what would, like, what would, he, what would it be like if he was to operate his own agency? Which I have a problem really just saying at all cause I don't think Kirishima could operate his own agency. <laughs> But I do see him like trying, but I don't know. I don't, I don't, it's, that's hard to say. Like, I'm curious, will he be working for, because we can only assume that the opening narration of the show is true and that the conclusion of the series is that we're going to find out that Deku is the number one hero, right? So I kind of wonder, is he gonna end up working for Deku's agency? You know, I don't know, Bakugo's agency? Will Bakugo be working for Deku's agency? I don't know! But I'm definitely thinking he's working for an agency. He totally would. Yeah, he's gotta put that to service to people, I think. Exactly. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Hey. This mic stands a little bit short. <laughs> Happens. Um, my question is, Yusuke is a very rebellious character, very delinquent. Of course he's got a heart of gold, but he's definitely gone through a lot to influence his behavior, especially in the early, early parts of the series where he's very rebellious. Uh, did voicing such like a complex, delinquent type character help you while you were raising your son? <laughs> no. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> There's, I, I have no words that can help anybody raise a kid. S straight up, I don't. A, they're all different. What works for one doesn't work for another. There's no, you guys all know this. You're all, you've all been kids, right? And you're not like everybody else. None of us are. We're all unique. We're all different. We all have a different combination that, that unlocks us, quite frankly. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, so I mean, but that's the challenge of being a parent in such a way, some, you know, in the way is that, you know, your challenge as being a parent is, it's, it's working tirelessly and forever to find out what that combination is and the, the reality to that, and you guys know this too, that keeps changing. We don't stay the same person, right? So I think the big deal, here, here's a way, you've all heard this idea that we're all the lead character in our own movie, right? As parents, you have voluntarily stepped into a absolute support, support, support role in your own movie. Dig that. <laughs> nah, right? So yeah, being a parent just means get out of the way, let your kids find their space, right? You think about Yusuke uh, and his dynamic, right? He had no father at all, at all. Um, and his mother, not the best role model. Mm -hmm. But here's something kind of cool. Yusuke doesn't drink. That's kind of cool. So what Zuko's teaching him stuff, she doesn't know it. <laughs> And, but, you know, but with, uh, well, I can't spoil anything. I mean, anyway, she has more lines coming up. So he still has her in his life. I think that's kind of cool. I think as we become adults, we start to make the phone calls back to mom and dad that go, hey, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> yeah, I was kind of a jerk from this age to that age, that kind of thing. So, yeah, j just uh, love them. That's the best you can do. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey, dude. Uh, hi. Ooh, really close to the mic. Uh, How are you? Uh, I was going to ask, uh, if you didn't voice Kirishima, who would you have liked to have voiced in My Hero Academia? Ooh. That's a good question, man. I don't know. That's tough. Let's see. Uh, you know what? I always love listening to Eric Vale act. I could literally listen to Eric Vale act anything. Right? He does Shigaraki, which is a very uh... different character. But uh, Eric and I, I feel have similar voice areas, like similar little that, real yeah. estates that we kind of carry around. Um, so I think that would be fun, because I think, but at the same time, with that being said, I would absolutely hate to not hear him as Shigaraki. <laughs> there you That's go. That's fair. Or maybe, maybe David Wald, that would be fun. Let's let Tetsu Tetsu and Kirishima switch places for a while. <laughs> that would be amazing. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, man. That was a plus ultra question. My question is slightly similar, so I'm sorry. That's okay. So we all loved you and Yusuke, and uh, as Yusuke and Yu Yu Hakusho. If you wasn't Yusuke, would there be another character in that same anime you like to voice? Hmm, that's tough. The reason why is because I got to cast that show. So I, everybody, <laughs> everybody who's in it is like literally the person I was like, that's the person. So no, I don't. Honestly, I never heard myself in the show. Uh, I, I thought that Damian Clark was gonna end up being Yusuke. Hmm. That's the direction I was heading in. How about that for weirdness? Not like with his Tagoro voice, but like as a hero voice. <laughs> like anybody see the Dragon Ball, the, uh, the Dragon Ball Z um, OVA, it was a TV special. The Trunks, History of Trunks, with uh, Damian's version of Adult Gohan, which I thought was an inspired decision by Sabbath, by the way, to not use Kyle Bear for that role. 
uh, and to use a different voice, like here's truly a character that grew up in such a different way that his voice to even develop differently. <clears throat> so yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it would have been crazy to hear, I guess, uh, Damien as use K, but yeah, I don't know about me voicing anybody else. I voiced Saryu, right? the ice dragon, remember that guy? <laughs> and Pooh. Yeah. <laughs> Pooh. <laughs> Pooh, Pooh's tired. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, thanks for the anime. Thanks for your work. Thanks, Huge man. Fan. Thank you. More than I deserve. Hi, Justin. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. I hope your day's going well. It's going perfectly. Um, my name is Rochelle. Um, my question is: Have you ever met the manga, the manga Kai, or the Japanese uh, counterpart parts to any of the anime that you dub? I have. Yeah, I got to meet um, the character designer and the director uh, of Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh, I don't know, back when things were black and white. No, I'm just kidding. It was maybe 2002 or three. It was at a convention. It was at AX back in the day when AX used to be in Anaheim. Um, and uh, yeah, actually, that's a pretty fun, that was a funny night. Uh, this was back when Yu Yu Hakusho was still on Toonami, so it had to have been 2003, would be my guess. Um, and it, well, in maybe early 2003, anyway, it was still airing alongside Cowboy Bebop. And there was a Cowboy Bebop panel that was letting out and the Yu Yu Hakusho panel was going in. And on the Yu Yu Hakusho, like both, both panels had uh, US guests and Japanese guests. And uh, so when they let one crowd out and one crowd in, it was a lot of people. And they had uh, uh, Steve, Bo, Sabat, and myself all at the doors and Steve starts just in character as Spike talking to Jet about these two idiot kids that are over here. Sabat and I start talking as Kobar and Yusuke K about these cool uh, cowboys that apparently we're meeting. <laughs> Funny they don't look like cowboys, they don't see any hats. You know, stuff like that. This is my sorry impersonation of Sabat's Kuobara. <laughs> Uh, but it was so much fun to actually like get to vamp with the two guys that were in a show that was my favorite anime of all time. So that was like super, I was totally nerding out. But anyway, that was pretty awesome. So it, that whole event was cool. And at the end of it, I got my picture taken with the, with the two individuals that I, I mentioned. They autographed a, a poster for me. I've got all that framed because I hang on to everything. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, how are hey. you doing? I love your hair. Uh, thank you. Yeah, um, it reminds me of Haru. Thank you. So you've worked on um, plenty of anime doing dub work. Uh -huh. um, how do you feel about um, producing or writing um, anime in English to be produced originally in English? OK, so uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, Space Dandy English dub came out like a day before it came out in Ooh. Japan. And that's just an example of where we got the animation prior to, you know, that a couple of weeks before it, so we could do it uh, simultaneously. But look, the reality is, of course, it was already finished, yeah. right? And already had a dub on it. I think by definition, anime comes from Japan, of like course. by definition. So uh, the only way to kind of get in at the ground level, as it were, would be, I guess, to speak Japanese and head over and test out my auditioning skills in that country. That's right. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that brave. Thank you. Yeah, man. Hey, man, how's it going? Good, brother. How are you? Tired. That's all right. <laughs> This is that um, weird time of day, too, and it's like during the summer. Anybody remember when we were kids and you had your bedtime before the sun went down? Did that not, not like, I hated that. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I told you, so, I get distracted easy. Yeah, so the question I have is kind of similar to one we had earlier, because, like, I'll someone asked, like, it what your favorite then. character was. Okay. But my thing is, did you have a character that you voiced that was just, like, you were so excited that when you got into the booth, it's like, I'm going to do this. It just got you pumped to be that person. When the producer at the time came up and, and let me know that after, I don't know, three weeks of running auditions through, that they had landed on me being the voice of Yusuke, I said, oh, wow, thank you very much. Uh, that's a huge responsibility. I greatly appreciated it. And then I got with my buddy, because I didn't have a car at the time, and he, we drove back home, and I was like, hey, I think they, they cast me as the lead character in this row. And as soon as I got in the door and I closed it behind me, I went, woohoo! Yeah! And I ran around the block three times. And then I got back inside, started watching the show, figuring out how was I going to do this. Awesome, cool, thank you. 
Hello, it's a pleasure to be here. Hope you both are doing well. Yeah. I was wondering if like Yusuke and Kirishima swapped roles like in both of their anime, like if Kirishima was in Yu Yu Hakusho and Yusuke was in My Hero. How do you think that would differ? How do you think their powers would differ? Like, how do you think that would go? <laughs> Changes the entire dynamic, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's see. First thing that would happen, Kuwabara. Kuwabara would lose all respect, I think, for Kirishima. <laughs> Because the whole thing between Kuwabara and Yusuke is, you know, hey, yeah. Kuwabara, you're conscious. It's a good look for you. <laughs> uh, Hiei would hate Kirishima. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is not happening at all. Honestly, though, Kurama and Kirishima, they get along fine. There's yeah. no problems there at all. Uh, and I'm not really even sure that Keiko would much care for Kirishima. <laughs> Maybe as a friend. Maybe yeah. as a friend, but I... Remember, it's the personality of Yusuke that ultimately disarms Hiei, that ultimately puts Kuwabara into this best friend support role, yeah. and that, that puts Keiko into a position to go, would you shut up? <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I think they're in the worlds they're supposed to be in. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, man. They saw it as a rock. No one ever says that to me. That felt good. <laughs> I like that. Hey. Hi, how are you? Good. <laughs> I'm very nervous. I had oh, to write it down. Because you got this, Jasper. You got words this. are hard. Um, I wanted to ask you, because you asked me earlier why Kirishima and Spider-Man, but what do you think? Why would, do you think Kirishima would be a good Spider-Man? I tell you, I'm inspired by Kirishima. It's his heart. It's the end of season three. That was mine. You're dressed up as her right there. This is my favorite scene in the whole show. When Sue, yeah, you, hi. <laughs> when Sue confronts, and that's exactly what she does, which is, by the way, what makes Froppy the best hero in my book. But she confronts Kirishima and says, you, you made me lie. Like, you put me into a position that my choice was either to betray you or lie. Why'd you do that? And Kirishima realizes it immediately and tears up and apologizes, and I believe means it with all of his heart and, and absolutely recognizes and, and understands there are consequences to these decisions that he makes or that his friends make. And this is a class of people. And I mean, like, they, these are my friends, all of them. And I can't, he can't put Sue in that position ever again. He will never put anybody in that position ever again. And at that moment, I was like, I get this guy. Here's a guy who being good, being honorable, being manly, <laughs> means something it does and what was the line uh, forget being a hero i'm not even a man i mean this was the fight he was in too right like that's what ultimately got him into that position so he's he's got some things to still figure out there but that to me just the fact that he's got that level of thoughtfulness that's inspiring and man i work to have that in every interaction i have i find that inspiring thank you yeah you're welcome jasper yeah, uh, my, hey, uh, my question's not nearly that deep. Um, okay, mine's a two-parter. One, All right. have you been to Waffle House? Yeah, <laughs> I've been to a Waffle House. Like right. in this town? Oh, no, just like in general. Yeah, yeah just I've been to a general Waffle House. Oh, awesome, <laughs> awesome. It's not a Waffle House, it's a Waffle Home. I, matter of fact, <laughs> last time I was there, they asked me to pass along a message uh, from the Waffle Association, yeah. which is screw pancakes. Yeah. <laughs> a, and second, this is really low-hanging fruit. And second, this is the more important part of the question. Okay. What is Yusuke's go-to Waffle House meal? Wait, what? What is Yusuke's go-to Waffle House meal? It's 2 a.m., he's out with Kuwabara, he a... Um, God, why am I forgetting What's his name right What's the scenario that ends Thank them you, at a Waffle House? But no, no, let's not go there. They're sitting around, what does Yusuke order? Yeah, I kind of started to th think you might be right. I don't know. That's rough, because now I'm putting my own self and I'm not eating anything from there. I don't, you know, I don't know. He could go either way. He could, like, get everything on the menu because he's, like, hungry, and that's where we're, you know, getting sustenance from. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know the menu well enough to be like, oh, Grand Slam. I guess he's a Denny's guy. Um, no. I don't know. Let's say he sticks with coffee. That feels to, to protect his cool exterior. What was that? Oh. 
He'd go to a Denny's. He's getting a grand slam. He's going to go to a Denny's. Okay. Thank you very much, Justin. Moon's, I always like moon over my hammy. That one always made me laugh on the Denny's menu. Hey, Justin, big fan. Thanks, brother. My question is, how many times did you have to retake the scene where he, uh, Kirishima resolved to use Red Riot Unbreakable? Oh, the yelling thing? Mm-hmm. Colleen only gun. lets me do that stuff like once or twice. I want to do it 40 times. Really? I'm like, I don't care, let's yell. But she's always protecting voices and, and being smarter than I am. Uh, so I think, honestly, I think we just did it like once or maybe twice. It didn't take a bunch. Could I mean, I you can one? hear me. I scream. I can hit it. Could I get one? Red Riot Unbreakable! Yes. Thank you so much. Hey guys, um, for requests, let's try to save that for the autograph table. I'm sorry. I did want to make a comment about, about, I just wanted to make a quick comment about how you were talking about the tree um, reference earlier. Yeah. But as she was kind of alluding to, um, even though you have personalities and things molded into a character, a voice really gives soul and heart to a character. And I feel like you gave that even in your screams of UK being in the, the cave, you really feel his pain in those moments and everything that he's going through. Well, thank you, so, man. I'll save my request for when I see you. Well, I appreciate that, man. I, and look, I'm trying for sure, right? I just, uh, I let you guys be the judge. Thank you. All right. Hello. Hey, what's happening? Hey. Um, so I was wondering, uh, are you at all thinking of auditioning for or maybe directing Chainsaw Man whenever it gets uh, dubbed? Because when I read the manga, yeah. I heard your voice in my head for Denji. Yeah, well, I, didn't, I tell you what, man, I will audition. That's for all sure. Right. <laughs> all right. Sounds great. Thank you for so sure. much. Yeah, man. Okay, this is less about um, how the um, how career and more about music because uh, because regarding your singer do you have any um uh, funny stories about when you uh, when you attempt to impersonate one of your favorite singers at a karaoke or something like that uh no i don't know that i've got any stories i really i'm not good at impersonating believe it or not isn't that weird uh i have like this voice and whatever voices i can come up with but I mean, am I in person? Like, here's a great example of me impersonating something. Majin Buu is me impersonating my rendition of Freddy Krueger. Okay. <laughs> from, remember that? What was it? The matter of fact, my reference line in that series was that line from Freddy's Nightmare. I guess that's the second one. You'll be the body. I'll be the brains. That one. Uh, and so yeah, that was produce. You know, so that was that was where that was. So that's how my impressions work. <laughs> Not very well as impressions. Uh, but they do okay as, uh, you know, original, uh, not, you know, original voices I come up with for a character. Um, but in regards to, like, imitating a singer, that's really tough to start trying to, like, imitate someone's, like, uh, intonations and, 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 and little mm -hmm. nomenclatures, as it were, within their vocal fingerprint. And so uh, in, in bands that I've been in before where I'm in charge of singing whatever that song is, uh, I, whatever it is I sound like as a singer, that's how that song is going to sound. So I guess I take it and make it my own. Cool. Yeah. Right, Hello, sorry, Dustin. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry. We got five minutes left. All right. All right. We can make this happen. Teamwork. Big fan of your work. Thanks. I watch you hawk a show every time I get sick, and it always makes me feel better. Aw, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, not that you get sick a lot, but yeah, I mean, but that, but yeah, that makes but you feel make better. But I was talking to people earlier, it's like uh, Atlanta's a pretty nerdy city with Momocon and Dragon Con and stuff, but I've heard Dallas and Austin has a speed, and then Anime Expo's in California. So I was wondering from you, what's the nerdiest city you've ever been to? I don't know, man. I think that, uh, I think we're gaining in numbers, though. I have faith in us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nerds unite. I don't know, man. I, every town I go to, uh, brilliant people, super kind people, just apps, you know, folks like you guys and, and me wearing our heart on our sleeves and sharing our passion with 
you know, all of our new friends. So uh, you got you got you got a whole you got 50 states worth of great towns to go to. Mm. Thank you. Okay, so hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> Okay, first of all, great taste in music. I'm from Memphis, so you know I, I flow with your taste in music. Hey, um, dude, I, lo I go there at least once a decade just to like, once a decade, like three, four, five days, and I take in stacks over again. I took my kid. He thought Isaac Hayes' car was the coolest thing he had ever really? seen. Really? Yeah, with all That's that so white cool. rabbit fur inside of it, a television. He was like, "Yes." That's awesome. All right, so uh, I'm a recent graduate of the uni University of Memphis. I graduated with my degree in communications and strategic media. Congratulations. So my question for you will be, uh, when you was talking about you know, your time at Funimation, yeah. um, now and then, it seemed like I do a lot of in-house stuff. So as a recent uh, graduate, you know, trying to get into like either voice acting, PR, or whatever it is that yeah. they might need, what would be like the correct way for me to go about it? Because like, I know a lot of jobs be asking for like five, six, 10 years, but like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be old. No, I got you, yeah. I got you. <laughs> All right, so first, it doesn't say don't apply if you don't have five years experience. Mm -hmm. It just asks if you've got it, all right? So one, um, always find the way to read the line that says come on in, huh. all right? So send the applications. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean you're gonna get the job. This is what I tell my son a lot. I said, look man, that first job doesn't need to be your dream job. The first job is just you taking a step in the right direction, which you've already done by going into college and finishing that up. Way mm -hmm. to go, man. That's, Thank you. Seriously, that's an accomplishment. Thank you. But now, dude, find that thing that gets you, whether it's working at a radio station out there in Memphis, whether it's working, I mean, you've got, you've got well, Sirius XM there at Graceland that's putting out, you might not want to listen to Elvis music all day, and I don't blame <laughs> you, but you get to be a DJ, you get to be on a microphone, you get to start practicing using your voice. You talk about that experience you were asking about, that's how you get it. Well, right? I'm a broadcast journalist right now. You know, I'm so telling so, you, man, you've like, already started to fill them up, and, and surely for the last four years in college, you've been gaining experience. Right. Use that. Apply, just apply. And Chris Wakecamp had a note earlier that I thought was absolutely perfect. They were talking about voice acting, but here's the deal. Anything that it is you're going after, there's a lot of other people going after it too, all right? And so the challenge you got is let them give up before you. Mm. You got yeah. this, I can't wait to work with you, man. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> Take care, man. Yeah, same to you, brother. Um, so as someone who uh, used to like make edits on Instagram, what's your opinion on the whole editing community, mainly on Instagram, and just fan pages in general in the community that that like, creates? Uh, I don't know what all that is, <laughs> but it sounds like you're talking about being creative on a medium. Yeah. yeah. Then I absolutely love it. I think it's the best thing ever. All of social media scares the business out of me. <laughs> it's, just, it's just weird for me. I yeah. think it's great for other people. I think it's a great avenue for getting to know people. I think yeah. it's a great way for, uh, for, for really just connecting, right? B making the human race a little bit smaller. Um, but anything that's got that level of, of, of uh, er, what's the word for it? Uh, what? Yeah, anything, I, I, the trouble is, is that there's so much, here's the trouble with freedom, is that people will take it and, and do something just disgusting with it, right? 100%. So that's kind of what I get a little antsy about on social media, but man, I think positive messages on social media is probably the best way to help social media be positive. So thank you for what you do. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of our panel. Let's give a big round of applause for everyone. Obviously, for our special guest. Thank you. So, hey, let me tell you, let me end, end with a few things here. And I'll try to keep it quick. I know we got to get and all that kind of thing. But uh, here, here's something to, to recall. Uh, we live in an incredible world. We live on an incredible planet, and it has been filled with inspiring people for decades and millennia, all right? So here's, here's, a, here's something I'll leave you with. There is a bunch of people that you should all check out. Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X. Uh, you should check out Hunter S. Thompson. You should check out 
just go, uh, let's see who else. Let's see. There's got to be more names in my my memory bank. I know there is. Check out the Eagles. Check out Led Zeppelin. Listen to interviews with with old rock stars, with old actors. Um, there's going to be good things. There's going to be things that you'll read that goes that person should be canceled. Uh, <laughs> But here's the thing, this level of inspiration has happened for decades upon decades upon decades. So your heroes, you know what? There's a world of them out there. So keep looking, find the one that you identify with, be inspired. And if you can't find your inspiration, keep looking, it's out there. I believe in you and I know you'll find it. Once you find it, you guys are gonna unlock your worlds and just the sky's the limit. Space is the limit. Actually, not even space is the limit. I love every single one of you, and I think you are all the best you I have ever met. And remember that you are special and that you matter, and no one can take that away from you. So don't let them, right? Don't let that disappear. Don't let your specialness disappear. I love all you guys. And, and if I may, yeah. to add to that, not only do you guys make this con as well as our guests? But as he said, if, if you don't see it, you can always make it. Because again, you are all special. You are all amazing. And so again, thank you all for coming to this panel. Thank you for coming to MomoCon. You've made this an amazing return from our COVID days. And <laughs> I love it. Thank you all.